Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating an interesting sum. We've done sums before, but I think this one is particularly interesting. We have the product of three consecutive numbers in the denominator. Basically, we have the reciprocals of the product of three consecutive integers. Like 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 4, 3, 4, 5, so on and so forth. And this goes on forever. So this is an infinite sum, and we're going to evaluate it. So this is supposed to converge, right? I'll, I'll be presenting two methods. And let's start by writing this in the general form. How can I write this? We're using sigma. n equals 1 to infinity sum of 1 over n times n plus 1 times n plus 2. This basically expresses the same sum in a more compact manner, right? The question is, does this series converge? And if it does, how can you find the sum? So here's my first method. I'm going to go ahead and work on this expression for general purposes because if I can find a nicer expression for the general term, then I could probably use it and find the sum. I don't want to give it away. That's why I don't want to use the word blank. <laughs> okay. So, so I'm going to use partial fractions, which means I'm going to break it down and write this because this comes from a sum of three fractions with the following denominators, right? Because if you make a common denominator, you should get the same thing at the bottom, which means you should get the same thing at the top or the numerator. How does that work? Let's go ahead and make a common denominator. We need to multiply this by n plus 1 times n plus 2. So it's going to look like this. a times n plus 1 times n plus 2, and then b times n times n plus 2, and then c times n times n plus 1. That makes this common denominator and gives us the numerator as 1. The denominators are the same, so we don't really care about it because it doesn't matter, right? So now we are supposed to find ABC. There's a couple different ways about it. For example, one way that I really like is replacing n with certain values, such as 0, negative 1, and negative 2, because that's going to give you a bunch of equations. The second method that I don't necessarily like, which is longer, is you got to distribute everything, turn the left-hand side into a polynomial. It's going to be quadratic with coefficients in terms of ABC. And then on the right-hand side, we don't have n squared, so the coefficient of n squared is going to be 0. And... The coefficient of n is going to be 0 because there's no n on the right-hand side. There's only a constant, so the constant term is supposed to be 1. That gives you three equations, three variables, so it's all fair, right? But let's go ahead and proceed with the shortcut because it's really cool. So replace n with 0 on both sides. Of course, there's no n on the right-hand side, so whatever you replace n with, you're always going to get 1. Make sense? It's a constant. So when you replace n with 0, these two terms are going to disappear or vanish, a fancy term. And uh, you're going to get a times 1 times 2, which is 2a equals 1. Beautiful. From here, we get a equals 1 half. Nice. What about n equals negative 1? When you replace n with negative 1, this is going to cancel out, and this is going to cancel out. And we're going to end up with this guy over here. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. So it's going to give us negative b equals 1, which implies that b is equal to negative 1. How easy and nice, right? And finally, if you replace n with negative 2, then you're going to lose this term and this term. And this is going to be negative 2 times negative 1, which is 2 and 2c, or not 2c. This wasn't on purpose, but it just came up. And for me, you're going to get c equals 1 half. Nice. a and c kind of agree, and b is a negative term. What should we do? We're going to go ahead and plug it in. Uh, there's a 1 half you can basically take out. So you may want to... Just take out a 1 half, or let's just write it as is, 1 half times 1 over n. I just want to take the a out, plus b, which is minus 1 over n plus 1, and then plus c, c is 1 half times 1 over n plus 2, right? That's what it is. Cool. Once I get the values of a, b, c, I can basically write that. This replaces my original expression, okay, inside the sigma I'm not talking about the denominator, it's just the whole thing, okay? So my hope is that this will somewhat telescope. What does that mean? It means that uh, a lot of terms are going to cancel out, and we're going to end up with something like a finite number of terms we can easily evaluate, right? Okay, that's our hope, <laughs> and how do we achieve that? So let me go ahead and uh, show you something first. 
From here, I basically get 1 over 2n, and then this gives me 1 over 2n plus 4, and then minus 1 over n plus 1. So I could probably turn this into 2 over 2n plus 2, and then hopefully something will come out of this. So let me go ahead and do that. Multiply top and bottom by 2, that'll be 2 over 2n plus 2, and then because of the 2, I can split this up. So I can kind of write it as 1 over n plus 1 over 2n plus 4, minus 1 over 2n plus 2, another minus 1 over 2n plus 2, because minus 1 minus 1, that's going to be a minus 2, right? Here we go. Now, what do you think? I'm thinking these two will probably pair up nicely together. Let me see. I'm not exactly sure how that's going to work out, but I don't think it matters because these two are the same. So, so we can probably pair up like this and like that. Again, it'll be identical if you do it differently. And now we get something like this, right? And then we have another one. And if you just kind of distribute this with sigma, guess what's going to happen? Terms are going to uh, cancel out. And of course, we need a bigger bracket around the whole thing. Now, notice that these two terms are two apart. These two terms are two apart in the opposite direction. And hopefully, something will cancel out. I mean, a lot of things. Hopefully, almost everything. <laughs> okay. Anyways, you get the idea. Hopefully, you can take it from here because I'm about to introduce the second method, which I think is awesome. But again, you get to decide. That's your call. Okay. So, second method uses another approach, which I really like. It's awesome, by the way. So, we kind of take it. And what we want to do is, okay, if they told you, okay, can you just go ahead and split it into two fractions or something like this. It will be fairly easy and this would be a telescoping sum. I can show you later on maybe, but not in this problem we'll do it anyways. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to use a really cool trick. Take the n plus 1 out and put the n and n plus 2 together. And the reason why we put those two together is, you'll see in a little bit, uh, it'll turn into something really nice. But how do we simplify this? To simplify this, I'm going to go ahead and do this. Always keep the 1 over n plus 1 on the outside. And then here, the expression, you see the expression inside the parentheses? I want to multiply it by 2 and then by 1 half and put the 1 half outside and keep the 2 inside. Make sense? 2 times 1 half is 1, so we're all balanced. Cool, cool. Now, here's what I'd like to do. Inside the parentheses, I'm going to turn this into a telescoping sum because 2, notice that there is a 2 here and the difference between n plus 2 and n is 2. That's perfect. You know, now we can replace 2 with n plus 2 minus n. And then when you divide it by something like this, you can split it up into n plus 2 over n times n plus 2 minus n over n times n plus 2. I think you should always use this strategy whenever it's available because it's just awesome. And you can do it. I mean, your teacher should not object to it because it's perfectly fine. And this turns into 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 2, which is awesome. Now, I'm going to bring in this one. And of course, there is a 1 half in it. So we're going to bring those two together. Let's see how that works. We're going to have a 1 half, and now we're going to have a 1 over n plus 1. Of course, this needs to be multiplied by the whole thing. Notice that the expression inside the parentheses comes from here, so we're all good. Okay? Now, what am I getting? I want to keep the 1 half outside and put the 1 over n plus 1 inside, and this will give me kind of like a telescoping inside a telescoping sum, something like this, and guess what? This is going to be telescoping. You know why? Because these are consecutive, these are consecutive. Now, how do you handle something like this? You can basically put the 1 half all the way on the outside. And then with sigma, you're going to have 1 over n, n plus 1, minus sigma, 1 over n plus 1, n plus 2. This goes from 1 to infinity. And this goes from 1 to infinity. And then you can go ahead and expand it and see how that cancels out. Let's go ahead and find out. If n is equal to 1, by the way, this, uh, you can also separate these into two pieces, but you don't really need to because this is going to turn into 1 over 1 minus 2. It's going to be like 1 half and then 1 over 2 times 3, which is 6, 1 over 3 times 4, which is 1 over 12, and then so on and so forth. It goes on forever. And this guy over here is going to start with 1 over 2 times 3, which is 6, and then 1 over 12, and it'll continue the exact same way. Of course, there's a 1 half all the way on the outside. Everything cancels out except for the one half, another one half, we're going to get 
one fourth as a result. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye bye.